What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video today and in today's video I'm going to be comparing standard shopping campaigns and performance max campaigns for Google Ads letting you know and breaking them down which one is best for you the pros and cons for using each type of campaign which ones I am currently using and overall just giving you guys some recommendations and tips for each campaign that you should take into account before you decide to make a brand new Google campaign. This is good for people who are just beginning with Google Ads or if you are currently running Google Ads and not seeing many good results, this could be a video that will help you out greatly. Now just before we jump into it, I'll leave links to my Twitter and Instagram down below. Feel free to follow me on there, drop me a message if you guys have any questions about your stores, whether that be Google Ads or anything like that. And as I have mentioned previously, I do also own a Google Ads agency. We essentially manage and grow Google Ad accounts for e-commerce clients. So if you'd rather us do all the hard work for you, just drop me a message on Twitter and Instagram and we'll get that sorted as well. Now jumping into this video, because this is one of the most commonly asked questions I do get on Twitter and Instagram. And I mean, just from looking on YouTube, there's not much content comparing the two campaign types. And especially with e-commerce people like us, we are looking to run shopping ads, so we don't really need to worry about search ads and that sort of thing just yet. Search ads do work great, but for this video and for just starting out if you're an e-commerce business, you are gonna to wanna to focus on shopping campaigns. Now these two are obviously very different from each other. Performance Max only really has come into play over the last few months. Performance Max obviously covers other areas such as YouTube and search, but obviously includes the shopping network as well. So if we just jump into this here today, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. I read them all and do my best to answer them all as well. So we'll go for standard shopping first. Now I will be hopping into my UK Google Ads account in this video just to show you some results I used to get with standard shopping. I haven't used standard shopping for about 18 months to two years on my UK site. Just a little disclaimer there. So the data you see is outdated because I haven't run standard shopping in a, almost two years now. But I'm going to show you anyway just so you guys have a bit of inspiration and see and so I can show you how it worked for me. So one of the pros is you have control over your bids on a product level. Now this is good because you can set a maximum cost per click for each product on your campaign. If you've got some products that you want a higher cost per click for perhaps because they're a more expensive item, you can change that on the product level with, without spending more on clicks for perhaps lower ticket items. It's a great way to manage your items on a item by item level rather than a campaign level. And obviously this is something you can't do with Performance Max. Again, you can see the theme here already, keyword management. Now, you do definitely have a lot more control when it comes to standard shopping campaigns, but that is essentially what Performance Max campaigns are. They're automated, they let Google are saying, you know, let us do all the hard work for you. But when you are starting out, you do want that control, and I do actually have a video on my channel for a low budget beginners sort of strategy with Google Shopping and that covers the standard shopping strategy as well. Now, more bid strategies with Performance Max, you literally have maximized conversion value or maximized conversions. And then you can either turn on target CPA, which is target cost per acquisition, or if you're doing maximized conversion value, you can tick the little box and turn on target ROAS. Now I'm just jumping into my UK account like I said we would, and I'm just gonna show you the other bid strategies you have and just briefly explain a bit about them and what I personally recommend for um, anyone watching this video. So there's literally two bid strategies for Performance Max with obviously the extra options for Target CPA and Target ROAS. With this, with standard shopping, you, you do have three. You've got Target ROAS, you've got Maximize Clicks and Manual CPC. Target ROAS is pretty straightforward. Again, you just set a Target ROAS of what you wanna use. I've personally never actually used this on a standard shopping campaign. If, if you guys have, let me know how that's done in the comments down below. Just as an assumption, I would say it would absolutely ramp up your cost per click and probably wouldn't be very efficient. Maximize clicks, pretty self-explanatory. You get a lot of traffic on a lesser budget, but the quality of those clicks are obviously not gonna be as good because Google is just getting you that traffic. Whereas if you're optimizing for something like a manual CPC, this will help increase your overall conversions and sales. I have used both. I've used maximized clicks. I've used manual CPC. Every day of the week, I would be choosing manual CPC. The only time I would use maximized clicks is if you've made a new campaign on a new account and say after seven to 10 days, you're not really seeing any impressions or clicks, I would switch over to maximize clicks just to sort of give it a jump start so it actually starts spending some of your budget. But anyway, as I mentioned, I always would choose manual CPC 
on my own account when I'd run them. And I would usually avoid the enhanced CPC as well. That essentially bumps up your cost per click if Google feels like that particular click is gonna get you a sale. Something that's never really worked for me, so I prefer to leave that turned off. And finally, for the standard shopping, we have device bid adjustments. Now, you could go into a million things with these campaigns because they're quite intricate in the amount of control you have. But device bid adjustments is a very, very good feature. Personally, it's not something I've ever adjusted myself on my accounts. I've done it on a couple of people's accounts before. And that depends on the nature of your business. You, you might find that a lot of businesses convert better with desktop visitors rather than mobile visitors. Especially if you're a business, for example, trying to get phone calls. You might adjust your device bids to sort of lean more towards mobile phones because it's easier for someone to click your ad and literally click call from their phone rather than the desktop ad where they'd need to get their phone out and things like that. So they probably find a better conversion rate with mobile phones. And if that is the case, all you simply do is add a bid adjustment here and you would put either a positive or a negative percentage. And then it would essentially either favor towards that particular device or unfavor, if you will, if you put a negative bid. So it's a good thing to do. And this is one of my old standard shopping campaigns on my UK store. Just so you can see the data, I spent £136,000 on this particular campaign. In most cases, you will see a better conversion rate on desktop. As you can see here, we've got a 3% conversion rate and a cheap cost per purchase of £7.97, obviously a lot cheaper than these two, but you'll find the majority of your traffic does come from mobile. As you can see, only about £10,000 came from computers and tablets, whereas £125,000 come from mobile. And because the cost per purchase is still really good on mobile and the conversion rate is still really good, it's not, it's not something I decided to change. But like I said, depending on your type of business, you might want to adjust these. Now moving on to the negatives or cons, if you will, with standard shopping. First one being limited scalability. Now I hit a wall with my campaigns, with my standard campaigns on both accounts that I've had where I could just not for the life of me get Google to spend any more budget. I could up the budget as much as I wanted to and it just wasn't spending any more money. I was even starting to up the product um, bids on the product level like I mentioned earlier by quite a lot and it still wasn't helping. And that's when I then switched over to smart shopping campaigns but obviously these days smart shopping, you cannot create a new smart shopping I believe as of September of this year. So you would essentially be going from standard shopping to performance max to allow you to scale much further and I'll explain in a little bit just about how Performance Max allows you to scale further. Next up is that it can often take a long time to gain traction. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean performance in terms of sales, but simply just clicks and impressions. Now, like I just said, especially if you are a brand new account, you might make a standard shopping campaign and not really see any clicks or anything for about two weeks. That, that has happened before, and in that situation, if that does happen, that's where I would suggest you use maximize clicks, but it can be very frustrating if you are a new user. But if you do it right, if you optimize your product feed correctly, and I've got a complete video on that low budget strategy, you shouldn't face this problem too often, but it is something that can become quite annoying and can still happen if you are a account with a lot of data. You might make a standard shopping campaign that just doesn't do anything. And the final con that we have got down for standard shopping that it could potentially be going away very soon due to performance max. Google are leaning heavily towards automation and they may completely scrap standard shopping. Even if they don't scrap standard shopping, they could remove features like the manual bidding and just leave you with the automated bidding things like maximize clicks and target ROAS. So that is something to pay attention to. I'm sure if you had a uh, existing standard shopping, they wouldn't completely shut it off, but they might prompt you to switch over to a performance max campaign. Now, leading on to performance max, you guys know I absolutely love these campaigns. They're the reason my businesses are doing better than they have ever done before. And one of the big, big positives here compared to standard shopping is that it opens you up to so many more eyeballs, essentially. Not only does Performance Max include um, shopping network, it includes things like the search, YouTube display, even Gmail as well, and Google Maps if you are a business that has that sort of data within your account. But these are the main ones that my business now appears on. And because of this, it is more beneficial when scaling Essentially, like I said, just because there are more eyeballs now on your ads, whether that be your search ads, your shopping ads, your uh, video ads that you don't even need to make. Google will make the video ads for you if you don't give them any videos, but it just basically gives you a broader reach, allows you to scale much further. But I can't stress enough, if you find Performance Max isn't working, please, please don't force it to make it work. You might need to take a step back and just gather data by using these standard shopping campaigns. And then with Pmax, hopefully you'll find yourself in a position just like I do, where I obviously look at my campaigns every day, just see how they're doing. 
but I literally do no changes to them. I might do a couple of changes every other week, whether that be just testing a new audience signal or simply increasing the budget. So they take a lot less work than the standard shopping campaigns. I found myself hours on end when I ran standard shopping, just looking through the keywords, excluding search terms, you know, changing product bids and stuff like that. It took up a lot, a lot of time. And not only has Pmax allowed me to scale further, it has freed up a lot of time for me, which I can now use and put into other areas, you know, such as YouTube and things like that. So that is one of the huge bonuses that I am putting down here for Performance Max. Now, next up is going to be the Insights tab. Now, I'm not going to show my Insights tab on Performance Max because everything you'll see will essentially give away the products I sell. And obviously, we don't want that. But this tab, if you use Performance Max, you'll be very familiar with it. It is a tab within your campaign that gives you an overview or insight into things that are working and performing well for your campaigns whether that be which audiences are performing really well which group of keywords and things like that you can then take this data you can go and take the audiences and then use them as audience signals in your asset groups it is essentially telling you you know this is working go and try this and add this as an audience signal it does really really well and i think over time google will start to share more information in the insights tab as well and even with the keywords that also is a great asset group with audience signal to use using the keywords that they're showing you are performing well chuck that into an audience signal and use it in a new asset group and you'll find hopefully uh, i certainly did that the results with those are very very good because they're telling you that is what's working now i am just quickly going to show you as promised one of my pmax campaigns on my uk site you can see this is last 30 days data and this is a one product performance max campaign we're at a 2.77 ROAS. Now I said this in one of my last videos, this certainly could be higher. I am only running my target ROAS, I think 275% on this particular campaign. So I could easily up that, but the amount of orders I start to get on the back end through email flows, you know, SMS marketing and stuff like that, I'm more than happy with this 2.77 ROAS because on this particular product that still gives me about a 25 to 30% profit margin. So I'm very pleased with that. And this is um, literally just data for uh, last 30 days, like I said, on a one uh, product performance max campaign. Now, if you want more information on how I structure my campaigns, especially my performance max campaigns, I have made a video on that as well. So just go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel. I'm sure you will find them useful. But anyway, onto the negatives of Performance Max. We have limited reporting, something I just touched on with the Insights tab. They only show you a few things at the moment, but even since Pmax started, or since I started using Pmax about four months ago, they are slowly adding more and more things that you can use to analyze your campaigns. But as they are in fairly early stages, it is still quite limited. And one particular thing is that you can't always see um, which transaction or sorry, which sale is coming from which you know advertising network can be frustrating. Now, another thing I've experienced this firsthand is that budgets can go crazy. They can waste your money quickly if you've not got a target ROAS or target CPA. So if you're setting a budget of 200 pounds a day or dollars a day, and you're not using a target CPA or ROAS, expect that money to be spent quickly. And I'm just gonna give you an example here. Now I am gonna show you firsthand an example of this. I made a new one product campaign, a uh, new one product performance max campaign, should I say on my American site yesterday. I set the budget, you can see 300 pounds a day. Today it has already spent 270 out of the 300 pounds and it's only half past five in the evening. And yesterday you can see it spent 450 out of the 300 pound budget. That is to be expected, but I know this product will optimize and do well because it's proven itself in a uh, bucket campaign. So if you find yourself in a situation like this and if you can afford to, just stick at it. Trust me, it will optimize, it will get better and it will start spending that daily budget and not going this this far over because obviously this is ridiculous. But like I said, I don't mind because I know this product is going to do well in about you know two or three days time once things calm down a bit. So if you are on a low budget, I always recommend standard shopping. And I, you know, I've said before in this video, check out my channel because I have a low budget uh, standard shopping testing strategy. Uh, moving on, we have got the data analysis portion and it is very, very complicated to simply see what asset groups are performing well against other asset groups. It is so, so complicated in my opinion. And by this, I mean uh, checking the performance of each product within each asset group. You're gonna have to go onto the listing group section. It's just so bulky, it's so unorganized. And, and I find myself sometimes making um, you know, spreadsheets and in just taking that data from that 
um, awful mess on Performance Max and putting it in a simple spreadsheet just so I can understand and see the data a lot clearer. I'm really hoping they change the interface of the listing group data analysis section, but I mean, it's not something that should put you off using Performance Max, but it's certainly something that can be incredibly annoying when you simply want to see what products are doing well and what asset groups are outperforming others. You might want to see if there's a particular asset group that's doing really bad so you can just completely turn it off and just to get that simple piece of information it can be quite a task so please bear that in mind but don't make that a reason for you not to run pmax campaigns finally some days uh, spend could randomly significantly reduce with no explanation at all i mean i just showed you yesterday on that particular campaign um, here spend drastically increased but it is a brand new campaign it um i launched it on the 9th of september i believe i literally launched it here and you can see the second day overspent and that happens with other campaign types as well i've got dsa campaigns that sometimes spend double the budget in a particular day but with performance max it may be doing well and all of a sudden uh, one day it might spend you know 20 30 percent of its budget with no explanation again this is more of something that's irritating and a bit confusing because you have no control over it so don't panic if it happens these things happen with pmax again don't make it a reason why you shouldn't run performance max especially while you're scaling but i thought i'd mention it just because it's another one of those things that even after three or four months of me using these campaigns still does irritate me a little bit so we're going to wrap this video up guys a quick overview of which particular campaign type you should use personally and you've probably gathered this from the hints i've dropped throughout this video for beginners and those with a smaller budget standard shopping is the way forward guys it is the better option due to the control you have over the campaign as well as the data it gives you it helps you just learn more about your products and your store as a whole and that data can help you make decisions of changes you might perhaps need to make to the product pages to your website things like that and essentially it will allow you to optimize everything which will then help you when you migrate over to the performance max campaigns I've mentioned it a million times so I will in fact leave a link at the top of the description for my uh, standard shopping low budget testing strategy it's the exact strategy I used when I used to use uh, standard shopping but with performance max it is a must use campaign if you are looking to scale and I'm sure a lot of you watching this video are in that position where you just want to be spending more on Google each day getting more orders and you will find yourself with standard shopping you're going to hit that wall and if you want to break past it you are going to be wanting to switch over to performance max if you guys want a particular video on how you should migrate from either smart shopping or standard shopping over to performance max let me know down below i can certainly make that for you because i know it can be a scary thing to do when you've got something that's working you really don't want to touch it but you want to scale it can be nerve-wracking so there are few things you want to bear in mind with that but i will touch on that in another video but essentially the fact that performance max opens you up to google's entire network of platforms it will not only allow you to scale further and wider but will also allow you to scale even quicker something you really should be bearing in mind for q4 which starts in about 20 days time so i hope you found this video useful guys i hope this is going to provide some value to you and help you decide what types of campaigns suit you best with google ads whether that be obviously standard shopping and performance max currently i'm mainly using performance max because i am currently scaling my stores but i know a lot of you are beginners and are just starting out with google ads and that's why i do recommend standard shopping for you but if you are in the process of scaling definitely consider changing over to performance max like i said at the start of the video i have my own google ads agency so if you are interested in us managing and growing your google ads accounts just drop me a message on twitter and instagram other than that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in my next video